All right, I'm pressing record now. Okay. And it is recording. Now. And, okay. This time, level three, <laughs> Ratchet and Clank going commando. <laughs> Developer commentary. Take one million. Here we go. So, uh, for those of you not in on the joke, which would be everybody except me and Tony, uh, this is the fifth time we've gone through this because of technical problems. Well, to be fair to us, <laughs> we're trying to do this remotely for the first time. Tony's up uh, in Oakland. I'm down in uh, L.A. No, no, hold on a minute. I don't live in Oakland. <laughs> Not that there's anything wrong with the fine people of Oakland. I don't live there. Where do you live then? I live in San Francisco. We should, not Oakland. We should uh, we should place your uh, address on this podcast so yeah, people can we'll, we'll put it down below, or we'll put it in an annotation on the video. <laughs> It'll be there for sure. If it's not there, then there must be some sort of weird technical problem. But <laughs> so, we're definitely going to make sure my address and contact information are out there for everybody to see. That's it. Seems so, prudent. This is this is the electrolyzer segment of level three, uh, and. Mike, correct me if I'm wrong, but for most levels in Ratchet and Clank, in general, the general uh, edict, I guess that's the word, yeah. is that there's a traversal segment and a combat segment in each right. level. Right, and traversal either being platforming or a gadget segment. Uh, yeah, and, and you know, uh, in, in levels where we had three segments, uh, it would be based on whether or not, you know, just sort of what... Oh. <laughs> Mike, don't talk when you do these electrolyzer segments. But you asked me a question right before I did well, these you know electrolyzer what? segments. I, that was my mistake. Just do the electrolyzer segment. I'll try to talk through it, and then we'll see what happens. But, yes, I think, uh, for the most part, we try to do a gadget segment and a combat segment in most of the levels. And maybe a third, depending on how big or small the level is. I, I think you are correct, sir. Right. Uh, and it was mainly just to get that, you know, a, a good variety in all the levels uh and then to make sure that whenever we gave you something like a gadget that we were having you use it enough times for it to be worth it uh and what we would do is we would set everything down in this giant excel spreadsheet uh which we called uh, you just solved that one Mike. you don't have to do it again uh, which we called the mac i didn't you solve have it. to actually move that block i didn't solve it you solved the electrolyzer puzzle so welcome to our Ratchet and Clank uh, Going Commando playthrough, try number 52. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm just laughing now because uh, if I didn't, I'd be crying. Right. So uh, yeah, uh, we tried to mix it up and try to have a lot of uh, a lot of gadget gameplay in each of the levels. Just to, you know, mix it up a little bit, make it feel a little bit different. Yeah. So I think, Mike, and I may be wrong about this, but the Electrolyzer might have been... One of our first big game development arguments. Was it? Uh, well, here's the, what I think happened. Is that I, if I'm remembering correctly, I was tasked to originally prototype the electrolyzer. And you... being me, I did a particularly shit job of it. <laughs> yeah, you did it. You did start it. And it was one of your first programming tasks ever. And you were not happy that I was doing a shit job on something that you had to take responsibility for. Was Something it? that you were taking quite seriously and I was taking quite not seriously. Because I, I had a that. lot of work to, to, to do. That They kind of... Oh. oh, Mike. Mike. <laughs> Keep going. So I was uh, tasked with delivering the first uh, prototype of the electrolyzer. And uh, it didn't take it very seriously. Uh, because I had other far more important things to take care of on this game. Like the multitude of levels I had to do. Yeah, you did and, a ton uh, of levels on this game. I had a lot of levels in this game. Oh, sadly, we've only seen one, and it was like half a level. So <laughs> I sound like I'm just talking shit. But trust me, I had a lot of work to do on this game. And if we were still, uh, oh my god, if we were still, uh, uh, you know, alternating plays each time, it's like I want to die. <laughs> so uh, there was uh, a little bit of conflict in that I would. I sort of hastily implemented the electrolyzer prototype, uh, not very well, as I'm wont to do when I don't really care about my tasks. Are you sure you want to let everyone know that, Tony? Well, I rarely do I not care about my tasks, but every so often, 
<laughs> I won't care so much. Like, for Usually example, the te- very first thing you were asked to program. <laughs> Not the very first. <laughs> it's only things that when you're involved. I oh. don't care about things that you have to do. Well, that yeah, and and for those of you that don't know, Tony and I knew each other for a long time before right. we, we started working together in the game. We went to high school together. And so I sort of implemented it fairly rapidly, uh, not as good as it probably should have been. And it caused a bit of conflict because it was something that you were really on the hook for. And I really didn't have much investment in. And uh, it causes conflict when that kind of thing happens, where somebody isn't, you know, putting in all the effort that they should or what you want them to put in to something. Like when your priorities are different, it causes a lot of problems, especially when one person has all the power and one person has very little. So that, I think, was what ultimately ended up leading to me uh, wanting to get more control. And, you know, uh, uh, that's why I started coding. Right. Uh, and so the electrolyzer was the first thing that I ever coded in this game. So really, you should be thanking me for half-assing my job <laughs> on the electrolyzer. I would, but I have to do an electrolyzer. Right. So, yeah, keep, keep doing this. Po- don't, don't screw up. Keep it up. Very good. Yeah, Mike. don't Very don't good. make me nervous, you mother. So yeah, I mean, I think that's sort of one of the. Uh, I mean, it was it's the weird dynamic that Insomniac had at that time, where you know, there wasn't a lot the designers could really do in terms of seeing their designs come to life, and I imagine that would that's a very difficult process to work in. Yeah, but also at the same time, it it kind of it makes you realize that it's not always about your answer. Like uh, many people can have different right answers and sometimes that process of of compromise and um, uh, thinking of that as a part of the process of design was a really important lesson that I learned well Uh, it's it's an important lesson in game development for everybody really and I think it's one of the things I'm still struggling with uh, now is that you have to be open to what other people say and realize that even if your idea is good, that doesn't mean their idea isn't also good. Yeah. They could be, for example, equally valid. Right. Uh, or better than yours and you're just biased. Right. Which, of it's course, never happens to you. No, no. I'm always right. It's the <laughs> biggest thing. But, I mean, it's a, it's a difficult thing to let go to admit that, you know, maybe somebody has a better idea. Or even, it's, it's, you know, in some ways it's easier when they have a better idea because you can be like, well, their idea is better. Obviously, it's better. It's clearer the right way to go. But at the same, but it's harder when it's, you know, both good ideas, and you just have to be like, you know what? I have to let this one go and let them have this one because it's not worth fighting over. They're both good ideas. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and you know, you can see that I learned my lesson because I said, well, if you're not going to do it, let me do it and just grab the code. Right, yes. <laughs> uh, but, uh, uh, oh, come on, man. Learning okay. experience for all. Yes, uh, but you know, I, I did learn all, a lot by by being able to code. Uh, like I learned a lot about why uh, you know programmers place their priorities the way that they do, and it helped me become a better designer in the end. You know, just watching you have all these troubles with this crane section just makes me dread what the focus test must have been like. Oh man, watching this crane section. Oh, it was it was pretty harsh. Oh man, did I forget the platinum bolt? Um, no. It was pretty harsh. Just, I mean, you know, what do they have to work with? They have to work in rooms that they've probably never been in uh, to set things up for Ratchet, even though they've never run around in it. They have a block, a green one and a, a red one, and they don't know what each of them does. Or, or you know, even that doors like the one that was here are supposed to be exploded. You know, like, it's just a big communication problem. Man, I have no ammo left. Maybe because you're bad at this game, Mike. Maybe because we did this 50 times. <laughs> uh, only one of which was directly my fault. But you know what, Tony? This is going to be the last time. Do you know how I know? How do you know? Uh, because I forgot to save off the save at the beginning. So Okay, so we have is... no other chances. Yeah, yeah. We, okay. we just have to go ahead with this one. But I suppose we'll find out in a moment if, if it worked or not. So finally, reunited with Clank, and it feels so good. You get your full ability suite back now. Yes, you get your helipack. No, you get your rocket pack. Mm -mm 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 -mm. You get the rocket pack. 
which is the better pack, All right. pretty much unquestionable. <laughs> I know that you always liked the Rocket Pack, it's and I know better. That, I know a it's lot of better. a lot of QA really liked it, but I didn't like the feel of it. It didn't feel right to it's me. It's better. There's no question. It's better. Because you can your, double jump higher? Your double jump is as high as your high jump. And the long jump is faster for covering distance than the long jump of the helipad. It's what? just better. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? We don't, have to, we don't have to solve this argument now because uh, a clank segment is coming up next. Right. Which was the longest running headache of Ratchet and Clank. Oh, man. I think... It's just trying to figure out what Clank gameplay really was. Yeah, was I mean, so it, difficult. It, 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 you know, and especially if you're a designer, like for us, it, it, it seemed like it was boiling down to just, uh, you know, pressing buttons that were disguised as little robots. Uh, it was kind of, you know, really frustrating for us to try to keep it fresh. So in this game, um, we just tried to come up with prettier and prettier buttons to press. Right. Uh, for example, the lifter bot is exactly the same gameplay as the uh, uh, the bridge bot is exactly the same gameplay as uh, you know all of the other bots. Now, how hard was it really to get focus testers to understand what exactly they were supposed to do with this whole new ability suite that we're not tutorializing at all. We're just sort of dropping them in and saying, "Well, have at it." It was pretty tough. Uh, especially if they hadn't played the first game, um, you know we'll tell we'll tell you about the you know they'll come in here and they'll, but uh, one thing that we did to help them is uh, let's see if I can actually make this work. Uh, the only time that you can tell bridge bot to build a bridge is near a bridge bot uh, gap, right? So if I don't know, it doesn't work. We must not have done that by this point. So you still had this ability that you can't really use, but it's still highlighted. Wow, okay, yeah, so uh, you you have to be near the bridge in order for him to do it. Uh, I think in later games we made it so that the it just wouldn't even show up on your wheel if right. you couldn't do it. Um, originally, once you walked over this bridge, you would have to remember to call the bridge bot back. And we had such a hard time with the testers uh, not being able to do that, that... The, the the user testers that we um, we ended up having to uh, uh, auto undeploy the bridge bot because they would just think he was supposed to stay there forever. Right. Oh. Or that you would get another one or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So you you used to have to stand here and say bridge bot, you know, uh, stop being a bridge, and now you don't have to do that anymore. Uh, the one and only appearance of the lifter bot. Right oh, is there. this the only time he's here? This is it. This is the only time you use him. Okay. Uh, he was supposed to be used in this challenge over here. Oh, wow. My camera's really weird. Uh, he was supposed to be used uh, here. The way this originally worked was down in this little chasm, uh, right here, there was a, a brick that you had to lift up with the lifter bot, and then you would have to have the bridge bot make a bridge across to the block that the lifter bot was lifting, if that makes sense. But that was just far too complicated. Oh, they were never able to get it. So as a result, it means that the you know the, the lifter bot only had one thing to do. He there was supposed <laughs> there was supposed to be an, an extra clank segment in the final level of this game, but it got cut because of time. And so and the lifter bot had three or four more appearances in that level uh, that he just you know didn't get to uh, uh, ever have. <laughs> Poor guy. It's such a, I mean, it's such a weird thing trying to get kind of gameplay to work and people to understand it because we don't have a lot of time to explain to them what's sort of going on. We kind of just have to put them, their feet in the fire, and say like, "Well, it's time to go." Nothing. Do it. You did great. Now let's go get that experiment back.